platform engineering getting widely adopted. And over the last couple of months, I had the opportunity to speak with many platform engineering team. And what I found out is that most of them actually facing the same challenges. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the top three main challenges for platform engineering teams and how to overcome them. Let's go. The first challenge is called getting zero birds with one stone. And what I mean by that is that many of the platform engineering team trying to get everything, but they do get nothing. So for example, let's take a look about the platform architecture. And we see a lot of really, really great tools out there. Observability tools, monitoring tools, CI CD tools, maybe Kubernetes or runtime tools, workflow automation, the software catalog, everything in one place. And that looks really, really cool. But sometimes the users, the developer inside the organization actually do not need all of that. They do need specific things that your platform do not have at the moment. What I mean by that is that when you try to combine all the tools and provide a single solution that merge the data from all of them, sometimes you do miss what is the main user's workflow. And that caused them to not use the platform. And if the developer inside the organization do not use the platform, it's a big failure for the platform engineering team. And the interesting part about that is that in the demo, it looks really, really good. Why? Because in a single tool, you can see information from many, many tools. But in real life, if you do not solve even a single platform for the user, they will not use your system. And that can be a really, really challenging thing. By now, your question should be like, how do we overcome this challenge? How do we deliver a platform that actually solves users' problems? So for that, you will need to sharpen your product skills and you will need to understand how the users inside your organization going to benefit the platform, even if it's involved one, two, or three tools at the start of the initialization of the platform. And for that, you will need answer a question like, what are the main challenges for users? Uh, who are the main stakeholders and what they are looking from the platform to get? So if you're doing a demo for the management and they are going to put resources inside the platform, you do need to nail the demo, but also provide value for the users. If you are an additional team, like what is good or bad with the current team running the platform, DevOps or whatever team in the, in the company? Uh, What's the right solution? Maybe the solution for the problem you're trying to solve is not really how you imagine it at start. And if you're going to implement a catalog portal, is that the answer for it? And based on those answers, you will be able to define what is a good and successful platform for your own company and business. And I have to tell you, like, there is no two companies with the same answers to these questions. Especially with large organization, they do build their own organization differently, the business units, how to deliver software, the developers have a different culture with that organization, and those things need to be considered when you are trying to deliver your own platform. And by defining what is a successful and what would be a success platform for your own organization or team, you will be able to define and solve real challenges for real users and make them use the platform for their own benefit, and then you will deliver value for your own organization. So sharpen your product skills, answer the question, find a solution, and deliver a really valuable platform. The second challenge is estimation of building operational cost. And I have to tell you that in order to provide and deliver a really valuable platform, you do need resources and which resources should be considered. So the first thing is that you do need a platform engineering team. And this team maybe should dedicate it for that task. And you do need headcount for that to run with a team. And that's, I know, can be one, three, five, ten people for a very long amount of time. And that's a lot of resources. The second thing is that you do need some budget to run your cloud estimation or cloud infrastructure, and that costs some money. Uh, the third thing is that you may need other teams 
to help you to integrate their own tools and services into your own platform. So if you decide what you want to build, then you do need the other teams, the DevOps team, the cloud infra team, maybe some software development teams that are responsible for a different software. For example, they are responsible for the observability of the organization. And you do want to integrate the observability into your platform. That requires the other team to actually allocate resources to be integrated with your solution. And you also need to take in consideration operational uh, budget or operational cost. How much it costs us, for example, to upgrade the platform, to make sure everything is maintainable, to patch security into it. And those also require resources. And those are operational costs. So how do we estimate all of that? It sounds kind of hard, right? So let's talk about the estimation and how we perfect the estimation to make sure that you have enough resources to deliver the platform in a very valuable way for the organization. How do we estimate how much resources are required? So let's talk first of all about how much people do we need in our platform engineering team. And I would say that some organizations prefer to have a dedicated team for that. Let's say three people running for a very long time. They have a really a long-term goal and a vision of what's going to be the internal developer platform for that organization. In some other teams or organizations, they do prefer to allocate some key organization people for a very a short amount of time, let's say one quarter or one and a half a year, six months. So the people will be in that platform engineering team. They will able to like initiate it because of their uh, proficiency in the teams that they came from. And after that period of time, they will go back to the team. I will suggest to make sure that you allocate the good people for a very long amount of time. Uh, that will create a really successful platform engineering team that does have a goal, a target, a place that they aim to bring the platform to it. Uh, have the knowledge and the experience to actually build and deliver a really good platform. So make sure that you allocate enough people for the team to run this kind of initiative. The second thing is that you do want to understand and estimate what will be the minimum valuable products for your platform. And it actually kind of connect to the previous challenge of making sure that we aim and solve the right problem. If we are able to actually focus on a single problem and solve it, that will make, first of all, our estimation for delivery much, much easier. And on the other side, make it really, really valuable for the organization. So make sure that you have a goal, that you have a target, that you have an MVP and estimate only it at first. And that will make sure that everyone allocate the resources as you need it for the maximum value at the first step. The third thing is cloud budget. I would say that you need to estimate that based on other software that you have in the organization. Uh, it should be a really easy task to do, to calculate, throw a number, Make sure it's not too low so you are not like need to request another budget, but it's not too high so it will not get approved. And the last thing is the operational cost. And the operational cost, how it's going to cost you to actually run and operate the platform. And for that, we are going into a discussion of build versus buy. And for build versus buy, I'm going to create a dedicated video uh, and talk about what are the good thing about build and buy and what should you consider. But in glance, you have like three options in here. One is to build everything on your own, code it. It takes a long time, and, but some organizations do prefer to do that. The second thing is run with open source, like Backstage. Uh, you can watch the previous video to learn more about Backstage and how to use it. You can also use a different option, which is a managed SaaS Backstage. There are some commercial offering for that. Uh, we are going too deep for that in the next video. And there are commercial offering from open developer platform to service catalog that offers a devel intern developer platform. And you can buy and use a managed solution with managed and out of the box things that will help you to start and getting initiated into the process and into your minimum valuable platform 
as fast as you can. And if you're able to estimate how many people do you need for how long, what is the budget requires you for get these things done? What is the goal that you want to focus on? And which product and services will help you to get through that? It means that your estimation is really, really clear. So make sure that you estimate all of that before trying to build your own platform and you're really aligned with the management of the company about the resources required for that, that you have them, and then you will be able to run freely and make sure that you deliver a really quality and valuable platform to your own organization. By now, you should have understanding of what would be a valuable platform for your own organization, and also that you do have the resources to actually deliver the platform. So the third challenge will be, how do we build and manage our software catalog? And let's say that we started to define that our MVP is going to be a software catalog. We have enough resources, but we do think about how we are going to manage that. And the catalog is a very complex thing, yeah, right? Because it's a database of all of our software our system, our locations, our APIs, links to our documentation, dependencies. Based on the MVP, you define what you want and what you're not, but it's a really complex database that someone needs to manage. You can deliver the base for the solution, the platform for the solution, but everyone in the organization should be involved. And that can be a really challenging task to have because let's say that you have a few hundred developers and they do need to manage, operate and update the information in the catalog about their own uh, services, resources and application. And we find out that teams that are able to actually update, make sure the catalog is really up to date and the teams are involved in updating the catalog, they do deliver much more quality catalog that people getting to adopt much more. And that's a big challenge. So let's talk about a ways to solve this challenge and how do we actually manage and operate and getting teams involved in our software catalog management. Managing the catalog is a long and never ending task. And let me tell you something about that. No one likes long and never ending tasks. This is why we need to make sure that we or drive the motivation of the users to actually make the catalog up to date, or we do make it really, really easy for them to do that in order to drive success. So we have a lot of ways to do that. Here you list four of them. Uh, one way to make it really, really easy for them is to have it automated. Automated means, for example, that we fetch and query live information from different platforms so the user would not need to manage it on their own. We see that in integration of Backstage. But also, for example, automate something in the CI CD process that anytime a CI CD runs, it actually updates the catalog with the last up to date information. It means that we reduce the, uh, the need from the user to actually deliver uh, and update the catalog. The second option is to have it enforced. So for example, if you change critical files in the service, it will not allow you to open a PR or run a CI if you do not update the catalog with the latest and greatest information. Making it enforced can be good, but also the user will need to do the work. It just enforce them and make them to do that. And those are make it easier for the users. Sometimes you have it enforced or in semi-automatic, depends on the process and whatever you want to deliver for that. Other options are more driving the motivation of the users, not by actually letting them use the platform. So the best thing to do is make sure that they are using the portal and the catalog on a daily or weekly basis. That will make them to go into their own page and say, oh, it's up to date, maybe let's I just fix that. And that will make the highest capable motivation to actually drive adoption and keep the catalog up to date because everyone would like to contribute to that. Other option, which is less useful, is to make it a standard in the organization. So for example, if you have a scorecard for what is a production-ready service or what is a scorecard for majority of the service, 
you do need to make sure that the catalog update is actually part of that. And if you have the right culture in the organization, it will drive users to make sure they are optimized this score. And actually changing and updating the catalog by that, it's really, really easy way to increase the score. And that's more a cultural thing and you need to have something in place before you drive that. The last option is maybe the worst, but in some organization it actually works, is by shaming the teams that do not update their catalog, send email to a really large group of users saying, oh, those three teams actually haven't managed to update the catalog in the last three months. Uh, send that to a really, really high level management and that will enforce them to do that pretty immediately. I don't like this kind of method, but it actually works. To wrap up the video, those were the main three challenges of platform engineering team in order to drive success. And let me tell you something, if you do define what is the critical path, what is the minimal value product, you do have the resources to allocate and you do have a strategy to managing your catalog, your platform is going to be successful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me using the comments below the video. And if you like this video, you're welcome to watch any other video in this ser series. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.